So you're alive, that's nice. So why is that? Well, because you eat and you breathe. And occasionally drink, but that's besides the point. So eating and breathing, you might need some help with that. No worries, plants got you covered. They use this revolutionary process called... Photosynthesis. What is it? It's how water... Ah. <sighs> and your breath, gross, and the sun, don't stare at it, somehow turn into breathable air and food. The etymology is Greek. Photo, meaning light. And syntithithan, syntithan, syntithithanai, syntithanai. Greek is still Greek to me. How does it happen? H2O, CO2, and photons somehow turn into glucose, a carbohydrate, and oxygen. Only visible light waves drive photosynthesis. Oh, f this, man, this is Bullsh Except for green light. I don't know, chlorophyll doesn't like it, so it bounces it off. Chlorophyll. Etymology, once again Greek. Chloros, meaning green. Fulon. Fulon. Fulan. Fallon? It means leaf. You see, it's green because it absorbs all of the blue and red light and only reflects the green. AKA, plants are green because they don't like green. Go figure. So what makes chlorophyll so chlorofantastic? Chloroplasts. First, they use some light-dependent reactions. So the chloroplasts have little coin-looking things inside them called thylakoids. More like thylakoins, am I right? <laughs> and in the membrane of the thylakoids, some photosystem or something absorbs photons that excite some electrons. Oh look, they're all jumpy and happy. The electrons move into the thylakoid membrane, and these electrons pull hydrogen from the stroma, this other stuff surrounding the thylakoid, into the thylakoid. Some enzymes or something will break water molecules into their constituent parts. Hydrogen and oxygen. Hydrogen is kind of cool, so we'll hold on to that, and this oxygen we kind of have to get rid of. How are we gonna get rid of all this oxygen? Oxygen. Stomata. Nothing. What's the matter with you? No, stomata, as in the pores through which gases are exchanged in the atmosphere. You got your CO2 going in and your oxygen coming out. Freeze! It's the NADP! And likes to bind with hydrogen outside the thylakoid. And then becomes NADPH, which is apparently important. NADPH and ATP are just kind of chilling in the stroma and then the light independent phase begins. Light independent reactions. Means it kind of doesn't need light or something. In a far off land, the stroma, the fluid outside the thylakoids, apparently some guy named Calvin discovered this part and called it a cycle. 5C, or rubulose biphosphate, has other molecules too, but that's not important apparently. Binds with the CO2 from earlier, becomes 6C, or 6 carbohydrate. So NADPH and ATP can't stand the sight of 6C and decide to beat the shit out of it. NADPH and ATP break down 6C into some 3Cs, phosphoglycerates or something. The 3Cs bind with the help of some enzymes or something and become simple sugars such as glucose. 6CH1206 or something. Glucose is cool because it's a carbohydrate, which means it's edible if you're not on a low sugar diet. Now you got a lot less unbreathable air in the atmosphere and a lot more breathable air. And bonus, you get a free snack with that, which is also a snack for your snack to eat. Sounds like a pretty sweet deal. Thanks, plants. And I know what I have to do now. You gotta keep breathing.